Yes. Welcome again to another episode. We're at a new site out here in lovely Florida. And it turns out they have messy network rooms too. So if we can just drink all this in, what a fantastic mess this is. We have uh, the main thing being that we've got a backboard over here uh, with all of our feeds. And then we have these three rack sets here and just drapes of cables that run into them. Yes. So what other than a mess and being messy is the issue here? Well, as someone who has to uh, maintain this equipment and, or maybe troubleshoot it or be asked to upgrade it, um, I can tell you right now that most people that I work with in this field would take one look in this room and say, goodbye, no way in hell am I stepping into here and touching anything. And, and there's a good reason for that. Specifically because when a technician walks in here, he's assuming a lot of liability and the risk of bumping something, touching something that ultimately disconnects a few things, and we've already experienced that in here, especially with this camera system, it's too high. Just way too high to, to even risk it. In fact, the only reason that I'm typically good at this, or even brought in to do any of this kind of work, is because I'm reckless. I'll admit it. I'm doggone reckless. Look at this. Let's see if I can pick it up on camera here. Ah, uh, yes. So here's a coax feed with uh, what looks like four uh, uh, attenuators. And if we follow this line around, we find that uh, it's split again. And then ultimately two more attenuators before going in. Talk about a hot signal. Or having the wrong attenuators. Let's see here if I can get to the back. So this is the issue that makes this site absolutely untouchable. <clears throat> By draping all these lines here and, and, and along the floor and all this, you've basically blocked access to the back here. You've blocked access to the backboards. I can pretty much assure you that uh, the phone companies, the dialect technicians that are going to walk in here are going to say, no, I'm not touching that because they would potentially damage everything in front of it. So. We're trying to figure out, because we have limited time and resources on this site, what we can possibly do to help out without completely gutting it and making this a whole new career for us. So we're gonna see what we can do. I know that this center rack is most likely getting get, gonna get pulled out uh, and replaced with new equipment, but uh, we're still in the process of deciding how we're going to handle this and how the customer is going to wanna handle this. So, wish me luck. about let's see here um yeah it is seven in the morning here in uh, beautiful Florida and I am on day about two and a half with uh, this room I've been working overnight and uh, it's just so many opportunities in this particular room to uh, cover some classic uh, cabling blunders. So um, I'm going to try to uh, be as orderly as possible and cover these, but I might I might just bounce around. Here's what I've uh, put in is basically this shelf here for the time being, and this is purely temporary, other than the patch panel. But uh, to begin with, this floor was an absolute mess of trash. Um, and this is one of the reasons why you need to keep your network rooms neat and clean so that other technicians don't think that it's okay to throw the, your trash on the floor. And um, so this particular rack was uh, out further, this one was out further, and essentially there was a wall of equipment keeping you from the backboard, which is very important, not only to you guys, 
but to outside vendors like cable providers and fiber providers and all those sorts of things. So these racks are not bolted down. Neither of them are. Now, of course, this is on wheels, fine. But these racks, they go up high and they are not, they are basically just, just standing on, on gravity and friction alone. Uh, both of these, and this one's pretty tall. So uh, I'm going to actually have to uh, mount this guy not only to the ground, anchor it to the cement, but also to uh, the walls above with probably a ladder rack or something. Anything to stabilize it. Now, uh, let's see if I can walk you through some of this. To begin with, power. Wow. Power out here is a absolute mess. To begin with, nothing but consumer-grade outlet strips. And, um, you know, on its face, they, hey, they work. They've been working for years, but they are weak and, and they have their issues. To begin with, they have switches, switches right here that make it really easy to bump and turn off everything on a strip, uh, as well as being just plasticky and flimsy. You want an outlet strip like this, an actual PDU with a covered power button. This is safe. It's also in the rack. So you're not doing things, oh, I don't know, like this. Now, mind you, I've already done this. I'm the one that mounted this and sorted all this out. You may notice it from the before video. But uh, here's some of the typical issues. A lot of critical equipment, including the routers, the DVR, they're all being powered by these power bricks, these t or this style of power brick. And uh, in many cases here, they were either zip-tied uh, to the side of a rack with the power cable just holding in by friction alone and, and fighting against gravity, or they were just dangling across the back here where there's a lot of that still going on. And really, the, there was very little holding these things uh, together. In fact, at one point, um, uh, several of, of this equipment, several pieces of this equipment, uh, did go down during this cleanup process, only to find them on the floor with this piece just slightly loose in here and disconnected. So this is a practice I've started doing um, just to prevent that from happening. And uh, so now this thing can be tugged on or, or, or stepped on or any sort of, no, any bit of abuse. And, and you're not going to risk um, having that AC plug uh, yanked out. So I've done that in several places here uh, since then. I think that's, uh, yeah, that's probably the only, all of it. And I've also done my best to basically pull back the abandoned cabling. This is all going to get eventually coiled up and... Uh, wall mounted. Um, I've also removed a lot of uh, long cables. So for instance, so we had a line and I think it's still there. This yellow line back here went into here, into this switch. It went back against the back wall all the way across to the other side. You can see it there now in the corner. But it, where did it go? The back of this rack. Yeah, yeah guys. It went right here to this machine right here. So I replaced it with a short yellow cable. At least for the time being, most likely a lot of this is going to go away. Here's a classic one, and I actually do a video on this where you have two rows of a 24-port switch and then a single row 24-port patch panel, and there's ways to mitigate this particular problem, and it's with using two separate cable lengths and uh, dividing uh, them between the two rows. So um, you might remember that one, or if not, uh, you can explore my library of videos. Uh, a, lot, a lot of classic stuff here that I've already remedied, but uh, here's one. This guy is really just floating on top of uh, what's most likely a firewall for the, the, the camera system. There is no tray for this guy even though we have spare trays available in this room even and I, that I used. Uh, when I got here, this server was uh, floating in here without any screws. Um, the patch panel below was basically holding it in place. 
had a lot of cables that ran um, in the front through the front of this cabinet instead of from the back and so the door couldn't be closed which was real rich as well you had these holes here where it hadn't been opened so there were a lot of cables that ran out around the front door to get uh, to get there so there's still a lot to remain uh, to be done here but uh, my goal was to clean up enough of the floor to be able to get to the back wall safely because now what I'm going to do is deal with this other blunder and that is these cables that are being draped between equipment and it's it's bound to happen it's going to be necessary I'm sure but you need to keep your cables out of harm's way and the way you do that is by putting up J hangers or something so that the cables run along the wall and you'll see that even with the older telco equipment that's how the lines are run and that keeps them off the floor and it keeps them out of the way so that is uh what i'm going to be working on next along with replacing a lot of these cheapo outlet strips with real pdus we've got some interesting equipment over here even a remote uh network controlled outlet uh, 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 power switch now here is the back of the DVR and you can see these are in many cases either um, in, in many cases these are Ethernet lines that are being split and uh, you'll see that right here so you lose or uh, you split off the green and the orange pair for data and then the blue and red pair for power and that goes to this big giant transformer here See if I can open that. <clears throat> yes. I'll try to get a view in there. So this is a power distribution uh, box for video cameras. And that was done, you know, questionably okay, I guess. Um, what was not done is how these lines were run into the DVR. And so here you can see it just kind of droop, uh, span across the air, and then other cables, including this gray power cable, weigh on those lines. So as the lines get up to the, the DVR, a lot of those connections are very shaky. So um, going if I go back to the DVR here, if I just kind of touch things, around the cables. I'm basically just kind of doing this sort of thing. You'll see these cameras go in and out. It's just ridiculous. I think, uh, you know, if, like if I ground uh, your a hand or something like that or put it on the side of the, the, the rack, some of the cameras come on. It's absolutely ridiculous, but it's because of this really shady wiring. Not cool at all. All this is going to get pulled out. We're putting in Ubiquity camera equipment. Uh, so we're not too concerned about remedying this problem right away. Uh, but a lot of these lines here, these sorts of these blue lines here, a lot of that is all going to get stowed along the side of the wall here on J-hooks, J-hangers, just to um, get it out of the way. Now technicians will be able to come back here, especially to work on their phone terminals or live feeds new lines coming in from that, that spot right there. All of this is what's going to be accessible now that the floor is soon to be uh, completely cleared up. I'm very much looking forward to getting rid of this rack. And in a sense, the only thing that this rack is supporting right now is the DVR and the camera system. So uh, once this shelf is uh, completed and the, all the equipment is there that we need, uh, we can definitely get rid of this rack and that'll be a huge improvement. Just uh, looking at this rack, and I've already um, corrected some of this. So uh, this this is my handiwork as far as uh, moving the lines. They originally came from this side here, uh, below this switch, in on the inside of the rack, into here. And on its face, that might look um, neat and clean, and that's not a bad idea. It was also done right here to secure the power cable for the Cisco router. And so on its face, you may think that's not a bad thing to do. But 
What if you wanted to put a new piece of equipment here? What now? So, so now I'm relocating this, uh, this power cable. But what if it is all of these network lines? What if it's more? You don't ever want to do this, even though it's very tempting. So I've got, I've got power cables that do it. And uh, they run those power cables right past the, AC, the, uh, the, um, the, these patch cables. Now, I can tell you right now that this is not causing electrical noise or, or anything like that. My m main problem with this, my beef with this, is that right there. This basically removes the ability to use this U, this one U of space, uh, in the future. So you want to run your lines on the outside of a rack. And when you do, you want to run it, like as I'm showing right here, you want to run it within the plane of the equipment, not above or below. So these power cords, for instance, should have run this way along the, the side of the rack. And uh, also over here, these patch cables, because there is a piece of equipment, actually two pieces of equipment between, have essentially locked these out. It, I'm not sure if I could even get those out without pulling everything else out as well or, or causing some interference. So direct lines in front, as I've covered in other videos here, are fine as long as there's nothing in between. If there is, you really need to do something like a one meter cable that runs over to the side on the plane, down, slack managed, and then back up straight like that so that it can be maintained. Strain relief would have been uh, a thoughtful thing to do here. I mean, you have the weight of this cable, and, I th and it looks like another cable uh, on top of that that I'll uh, probably have to disconnect at some point. And then this long extension here, and these are, uh, these are uh, attenuators um, that stacked up on this thing basically to, um, to reduce the strength of the signal because it was probably too hot. But what's pr pr worrisome here is the weight pulling on these. That's because it's so far away from the rack, it's going to eventually start doing that sort of thing. This is where I would have considered doing something like this, you know, something to mount this line uh, with this or something like that, just to maybe secure it to the rack here to where there is no weight being pulled on that connector. And these are the things you want to consider when, when putting, these, putting these things together. If you see things like that, uh, do your best to prevent it. Another classic blunder is the outlet strip that is supported by friction alone. You have power cables here that are hold, held in and they're prongs squeezing against the inside of those plugs are the only thing keeping that outlet strip up and running. There were several of these in here and um, yeah, I got rid of as many as I can but I still had some left, at least I got them on film, on film, like I'm using film. Here's an interesting thing. So this power brick here has a zip tie to secure it. And uh, this was probably this is probably the irrigation system or sprinkler system that's being controlled there. Um, and if this were going to stay in place more permanently than I than I hope, um, then yeah, I would have probably done the same thing on this. But I'm actually going to leave that at least it's off the floor and less risk of uh, foot traffic bumping into it. Here is most of the abandoned equipment that was pulled from, uh, from the floor and, and this room so far. Uh, a lot of uh, switch equipment. Actually, I wound up repurposing um, one of those switches uh, right here for my temporary uh, Unify system setup. But, yeah, and this is after stacking neatly. Uh, even an entire ops here, uh, um, I'm going to have to see if uh, it's in decent shape to repurpose it, but lots of legacy equipment, lots of uh, um, equipment that just was basically taking up space. Um, and I understand, you know, things, things kind of uh, evolve organically and you don't necessarily have the time to pull out the old retired equipment. But come on, you know, have some pride. Have some pride in your, in your home. 
and clean up your mess eventually. Well, as you can tell, it's been a bit of work. I believe we're probably at day three or four with this room and uh, a lot has changed in here. Primarily the big deal is you can see the floor and my wheelchair, but um, most of this is going to go away. In fact, this whole rack is probably going to uh, be uh, pulled tonight. Um, but uh, yeah, I've got our new equipment down here now and uh, temporarily cabled. It's going to be uh, changed. And we uh, put a, together a little PC here to handle some Ubiquiti software for the moment until we get it hosted. So what I wanted to mention today is, or at least in this uh, clip, is a bit of cable management uh, concepts. And you'll see down here uh, uh, these guys, these are called D-clips or D-rings. And uh, a lot of telco equipment is uh, run with these things. I'm not a fan of these, mainly because they're closed. So I prefer like uh, J-hangers where uh, the, the, um, the tops are open. But there's a lot of line here that's just draped into the air onto these racks. There's lines that run you know, along the floor between the racks. Uh, we have cables in the back here that have uh, excess slack and just uh, draped along the floor. And we need to come up with a solution that will uh, br uh, manage to convey the cables coming from throughout the building here uh, over to our primary ra equipment rack, which will uh, be, which will uh, ultimately be here. So um, what I've decided to do is I'm going to fabricate, and this is actually the wrong spot here, but I'm going to have to do it over top here, a um, a wire shelf. Um, uh, cable conveying uh, spot here that'll just help lines get from one side to the other. I'm going to use a bracket like this because uh, this is actually much longer. I think this is 18 inches or 20, 24 inches, something like that, uh, long. And the the uh, the actual shelf is only 12 inches. And the reason that I'm going to do it this way is I want the shelf to stand proud from the equipment that's here especially I don't want to interfere with my terminal boxes from the phone company or the 66 blocks or this uh, T1 chassis so unfortunately it is going to have to go overhead and uh, of course when all this equipment goes away it'll be much nicer but uh, yeah it's going to have to go right across here so this is going to be a fun night for me here's a good example of uh, really bad cable management again this was uh, this was zip tied together. I just cut it, but it was the primary and secondary power supply for their uh, marine server, straight to a wall outlet. So no backup power for this fella. But the thing is, this is a rolling cart. So by by uh, zip tying the power cable tighter, you're basically making it worse because the, the, the farther you pull it, it's just going to yank itself out of one of the weakest of the two connections. So uh, I'm going to do a quick uh, remedy for this that you'll, you're about to see. Okay, so this, this is the solution I just uh, put in here. I, uh, I was hoping that this rail had some holes on the sides, but they didn't. Uh, that's okay, though. Uh, basically what I'll do is I'll run one zip tie completely around, but this is not going to provide enough pressure to... or, or uh, you know, tightness on the cable. That's all right. I can put another tie wrap around that one, and that gives me plenty of friction to prevent this thing from being pulled out. I'm probably going to put a second one all the way around just for a, a you know, belt and suspenders type of a situation, but um, that should do it for this side. Then I put tie wraps throughout the cable. This keeps it from binding up, and then I secure it to conduit. And here's where I doubled that up again. I leave plenty of slack so that if this needs to be uh, relocated or anything uh, uh, here, I can do that. But uh, this this is a much safer um, condition where no one is going to accidentally unplug a server. Uh, along with that, I wanted to mention, here's another use of a uh, good use of tie wraps, is uh, these um, RS-232 connectors. So a lot of these I'm finding here look like so 
and they're missing the threaded connector that ties them together. So there's a lot of risk of these getting accidentally pulled out during this maintenance and uh, upgrade so I'm going to be securing them like this. I mean the the RJ45 at this end has a clip in it that keeps it from being pulled out but the these guys with the threaded connector doesn't work it's got nothing but friction holding it in so I'm going to be repairing these guys as well in the, for the time being until this system is replaced. <coughs> well we are at a stopping point primarily because I've got to fly back home and uh, work a few things out and uh, return but uh, this is the current state right now it's going to be a bit messy but um, it is pretty much revised so here's our new ubiquity equipment kind of uh, hidden behind some temporary cables so we have our USG that I've mounted on the side along with uh, two PoE switches and a patch panel I've got a tray down here basically for a keyboard and mouse that I'm actually not using at the moment and then we set up a temporary PC right here to control the Unify video uh, until we move that to the cloud. You can close the door now on this fella. Rerouted the cables for that. Um, general cleanup around here. A lot of uh, thrown away abandoned cabling and unnecessary cabling. And even uh, this mess here, most of all of this is going to go away when I return, as well as these strong lines. Um, set up. A temporary tray here, keyboard and tray for the controller. Have uh, removed a lot of equipment from here and this uh, soon will be removed once we finish testing uh, the new Wi-Fi and can uh, shut that off. Have a uh, umbilical cord now coming out of the rolling uh, cabinet so that uh, eliminates that and you'll see no more or very few lines that uh, drape across here anymore. Now uh, above, this is a uh, been implemented now so this is going to be the run for cabling uh, that needs to uh, transverse this room and uh, the idea is you don't run lines along the floor in fact in this area you want to keep as much off the floor as possible because this is a prone uh, flooded uh, flooded area in fact this room was flooded so uh, we're going to be actually elevating things uh, this we're getting a new uh, ups that's going to go up a little bit higher uh, this is uh, telephone equipment, PBX equipment, that's related to this. So uh, when this system gets revised, uh, which should be very soon, uh, that bottom shelf will become available and we'll just leave it there for space, uh, mainly in case of flooding. Uh, so a lot of these lines are going to be uh, either coiled up or run up and across in whatever direction they need to go and back down. I was hoping I could put this at a lower level almost to where you could reach it uh, without any assistance but there was just no uh, clear way to do this without blocking something important uh, either a punch down block or something like that and there was not a not enough I could move in fact I had to move quite a bit even to make this fit above so uh, this is where we stand it's uh, definitely beginning to look better even though it looks worse or it might look a little worse let me tell you, this floor looks so much better. It may not show up well in ca on camera, but you could practically not see the floor. So, signing off for now, and we'll pick this guy up probably in a couple weeks. I wanted to talk about this particular uh, patch panel design because uh, we ran into a big problem when uh, working on these and of course the the devil's in the details and typically the problem with these is and with most past patch panels is when you have to add lines or make changes later on and uh, the kind of in issues you're going to run into so here's that same patch panel without any cabling in it now at first I was I was very pleased with this because of the fact that it has a strain relief so the lines can come out of here and they'll get secured on here as you can see here and that way when when there's flexing or movement or the panel is moved around or whatnot it doesn't affect the idc points back here the in, in, in the insulates uh, in insulation displacement connection uh that's how these guys work now uh what i found interesting though was the fact that these come off like so so they're they're not permanently you know, mounted onto the panel, doing this with one hand, there we go, but they actually can slide out, and I thought, that's interesting, I wonder, you know, what the deal is with that, and then I found out, because 
when you start to punch these down, you'll realize that you can't have the, the strain relief in place because it interferes with the punch down tool on the bottom row. So if you've already got the panel, the, the, uh, the strain relief bar uh, mounted, if you need to do any punch downs on the bottom row, which you will always do because these guys uh, split between the top and bottom, then you have to detach this. So now it's detached on this one, and you can see that now I can kind of twist the panel. Oh, there goes the bar. I can twist the panel, and the cables will flex, and now I'm able to access the bottom row. Well, the problem with that is that everything you are trying to alleviate, that is, putting any undue stress on these IDC points, is now exasperated by the same panel or the same uh, strain relief that was meant to relieve it. Uh, so I don't recommend this anymore, at least not something like this, because you need to be, still be able to punch down or, or access these, uh, all these points with a tool. So I'm going to show you now how I have to rebuild this entire panel uh, to deal with this issue now. Okay guys, here's a perfect example of why I don't like to run cables and patch panels the traditional way. So this patch panel right here, you can see there's a port one. Uh, I'm being tasked with uh, pulling that cable out because we're going to reroute it and repurpose it for something else. And I can already tell just from feeling back here, all the other cables down here have stacked on top of this. So uh, and at this point, I'm going to take this apart and we'll take another look at this from the behind. From the behind? What's that? You know, before I take this panel off, I wanted to show something else too. Using these short jumpers, man, it's convenient, you know? Um, and it's easy to be, it would be easy to justify even, because there's really nothing in between, there's nothing that interferes with this. And uh, I could easily see using short jumpers in this situation. But, you need to be able to remove this panel without any issue and get to the back of it. And if you can't do that with these short patch cables in here, don't do it. If you've seen any of my other videos where I use these uh, direct patch cables uh, from one, you know, basically move vertically, I always show that panel being removed and being a, uh, gaining access to the back of it while these cables are in place. If you can't do that with these uh, short cables, don't do it. All right, here's exactly what I mean. I, I uh, was able actually to uh, pull this panel out without unhooking anything and um, get to the back of it. So I have it zip tied over here, but this is exactly what I mean. So I'm trying to get to the cable that are on these pins. So I've got to lift all these lines up and try not to put any stress on the IDCs. Uh, so this is going to be a little tricky. What I'm going to basically do is try to tie these down right about here with a zip tie so that I can lift these lines back without stressing any of the connections. And one more precaution I'm going to take before I lift these lines up is I have redressed uh, the lines that are ahead of it. So at least, and yeah this may be for aesthetics, but the main reason is that I know from this zip tie this way none of this is going to move when I lift this up. So really at this point this zip tie is only here to be a strain relief for this area right here and really for only these guys. And I've also I very carefully looked through all these lines just to make sure that nothing is out of place already. And so with that I'm going to start I'm going to go ahead and proceed to uh, move these guys over. Okay, so here we are. I've got the lines isolated off, and now I can get to pulling this guy out. Now, yeah, I could cut this, um, and, and certainly would, but I needed to know which line it was. I had to isolate these guys off of it to do that. So, uh, yeah, I much prefer from a patch panel coming straight back and then doing everything, not laying them flat like this for this kind of a reason. I found this out myself the hard way uh, with a job I did where uh, I had a problem with a line after I'd assembled like 200 of these uh, drops 
and realize it was buried underneath here. And luckily, um, I was able to, to do it without too much destruction. But that's why I don't do this anymore. Now, here is the patch panel that that cable I just took out is getting relocated to. And this is a conventional, aka traditional, uh, patch panel with a couple of exceptions. Um, the, most patch panels are done this way now where the, uh, the four pairs go two below and two above so that they kind of hold a, or occupy a space, you know, uh, in this plane as they come across. So there's not a, a, a four pair going this way and then a four pair coming on that one. I like that arrangement. Um, and this one, uh, this is a one I spec because it has a strain relief. And um, along with that, though, I discovered, and I've, I'll probably talk about this later, but um, I couldn't punch down the, uh, the connectors on this side with the strain relief in place. And if I took the strain relief off, it would tend to pull on the IDCs. So I put these loops into the cables. Looks kind of neat, actually. All righty, this guy is done. The line has been uh, uh, spliced or um, uh, punched down, and uh, my strain release on, and the support bar is back in. So I'm going to start dressing this back in. But I wanted to emphasize something here. This was done on a live system. Both the uh, panel that was pulled and the line was taken out of, and uh, this panel that I'm still building out, but is everything on here is active. I brought no circuits down doing this. And um, maybe that's because I'm reckless, but I designed these systems to be able to do this. And uh, there's really nothing wrong with it. As long as you have you know, all allocations for things like this to where there's no stress on the actual, the, the weakest uh, links of these connectors, you should be okay. So now I'm gonna uh, probably one by one, zip tie at a time, I'm gonna address this guy back and uh, put this guy back in the rack. So I'm at a point right now where I've really got most of the cabling mess off of the floor. I have a few stragglers uh, that are run uh, temporarily. Uh, you know, I know this guy I ran temporarily. Most all of the lines right now run up and over, but there's a lot of intercommunication going on between this rolling cabinet and this rack still. And the main reason is that there is a lot of equipment on this bottom shelf here, you can see some of it, that is basically only for this system over here. So, uh, and, and of course on this side here, this server chassis actually is designed to be rack mounted with, a, with an, adapter, an adapter kit. But it also means that it's wide enough to lay flat except that if I need to access this, this equipment in the future, I'm, I have to make sure that, it, of course, most likely it's gonna be me to do it, but I have to make sure I still have access once I've laid this server flat. So I have to find out which side opens and figure out whether to put this on the bottom or the top or where, where to place it to give me the most opportunity to access it in the future if I need to. Because what I'm probably going to do is uh, reuse some of the shelves that we removed inside here to relocate the equipment down here. And I might even use these shelves. We'll see. All right, well, it's a bit louder in here. Thanks to uh, you right there. I hope your mother's watching. Anyways, um, we're very close to the finish line. And uh, I have a lot here to show and go over. I'm gonna wait until until I'm finished to do most of that. What I wanted to uh, go over right now, at least, is is this right here, along with this right here. So uh, what I have done, and I'll do it on this one mainly, is I've I've dressed all the cabling back to a point, and. Mind you, this is after we've already pretty much put the, installed this from scratch, this traversing cable tray. But this is actually a practice most commonly used in, in fiber cable cleanups because 
you, you really don't have the ability to change lengths. So fiber cable is always going to be too long. So you have to manage the slack somehow. And the best way to do it is horizontally overhead. So what we typically will do is wind up with this mess vertically. But if you're patient and careful, you just slowly dress it up. And eventually all of that extra will wind up laying ne neatly actually on this shelf. Now you may be thinking, well, there's, there could be cables that cross over and, and tangle and that sort of thing. That's fine because I can simply carry those tangles all the way up to the top and over the shelf. I can almost guarantee you there's going to be a bunch here. I actually got started dressing one of the um, bundles back with a cable comb and had to add a few more lines to it. So I've got to start that one over. Got to cut all those zip ties and start over which is no problem. So uh, I think this is interesting. A lot of people who don't have a background in working with fiber might not know uh, about this technique, but uh, I don't really even think there's a name for it. But the idea basically, like I said, is to dress it up and then cover all that slack horizontally. So um, now I'll show you what that looks like when I'm finished. Okay, folks, this is the final video for this episode. This room is finished. I'm so happy. I'm very satisfied with how this came out and um, I'm gonna walk you through it and hopefully you'll be able to hear me uh, through all the noise. I hate your computer. So this machine here, well this, uh, this cabinet, this is a rolling cabinet. You may remember from uh, video 15 that I did, episode 15, that I created this flexible umbilical for that, that rack and this is what I did here because this machine does move around and uh, it now has that latitude to do that. I um, added this uh, bar right here to tie this to that secures our new power, and I'll get to this in a minute, but we had this put in. Uh, and then this long umbilical, it also includes power. Now, this cabinet gets accessed on a daily basis through here. You can see I rotated the uh, server down on its side, give it some more room inside the cabinet. All of this equipment here was actually down here on a shelf, and I took this shelf with some angle brackets and mounted it to the side of this cabinet. So now everything is mounted and set it it's solid. None of this is gonna fly around or anything like that. A lot of things like this is what I really value, being able to um, uh, keep sturdy. So none of this is gonna flap around and break, which happens a lot. And then uh, you can see the, the the power bricks are, still, are, are uh, mounted as well on the wall. All of these unusual connections have been secured with uh, zip ties. You can see that, I think. There we go. I've done things like that. And then uh, this, uh, this equipment here was actually laying on the top of this cabinet before. And I put that on a shelf back here. And I still have a shelf with some space left over and a, uh, a little printer that they actually don't use very much, but it needs to be there put in a rack mounted uh, PDU here, got rid of I think like a half dozen outlet strips that were in this room. This machine here was mounted by the cable company um, and it's temporary. So this is actually going to go away soon and we'll have this space back. Now also, these you may recognize as door latches uh, for putting a 2x4s down and holding a door closed. Worked perfectly for what I need. Overhead, you can see the wire rack that I installed. Sure, we could have ordered something, but time was of the essence, and we had to work with what was available locally. And this worked out really well. This is actually a very common practice in fiber. And it was interesting to do it on this job here, where I had many uneven lengths and a lot of uh, tangles and crossovers, and I was actually able to just dress them up into this area and just let them fall as they may. So any excess slack, any, any uh, tangles like that, all get dealt with in this area overhead. This also opens up the floor space. So in reality, a technician now can easily walk through here without any trouble. We can even get to this wall, even to the far corner if they have to. Same thing over here, we didn't have um, 
uh, the, what would be the proper bracketry for this. These are just wall-mounted hooks. Three of them did the job. Works out just fine. So uh, let me go back here to the front, and I'll just start from the bottom. Brand new, uh, well, brand new, a refurbished uh, UPS and UPS was put in. This is a 6,000 VA UPS with an additional battery pack. These two racks right here are uh, um, a step-down transformers because this produces 240, and so this breaks it down into 120 to service all of the uh, equipment up top. You may think this is excessive for this rack, but remember, we're all going to almost all PO, uh, PoE on our equipment. So like for instance, right now, these two switches handle all of the uh, uh, access points and uh, soon to be other equipment. So uh, it's only gonna be more and more power demanding on this unit, but we've also lose a lot of power uh, in this part of the state. So uh, I'm not at all ashamed to have put in such a heavy duty ups. Again, I wall mounted the uh, USG from Ubiquity. And uh, I kind of like it there. Um, not completely satisfied, but it seems to be the best spot for it at the moment. And our uh, new patch panel. Let me I leave a little space there. Now this is interesting. This bracketry here was actually on site already, but it was for a t old CRT TV. So I just bought a piece of shelving from Home Depot and some uh, aluminum angle bracket and made this keyboard tray, and I really, really like it. It uh, is so flexible in where you can go with it. I think I'm gonna do something like this more in the future. I really like this. I've also secured the cables underneath there. Everything is uh, well tied down. Nothing to chance when it comes to possibly stepping on something or bumping onto something. Everything has been well tied down. The uh, monitor also was mounted to the side of the, the, uh, the rack on a, a little bracket I just happened to have um, laying around. Also can be used in both directions. Our, one of the few things that didn't move or didn't change at all, and that is this uh, PBX system. And uh, this other switch is onto a separate network, another PDU. This actually was added while we were working here, uh, some sound uh, crew came in and installed this stuff. This was a modem that was on that other rack. And then all of this equipment pretty much stayed the same. However, we did brace this rack to the uh, studs and anchored them to the ground as well. So this is now set in stone, literally. Some other interesting uh, tidbits here are the brackets I use on the sides. And these are just Home Depot found L brackets, but they are uh, well secured to the rack. And those are holding uh, most of my horizontal cable management. I think I've got one on this side too. Oh yeah, right here. So uh, that went in. And then on the back side, you can see kind of how some of the cabling was done. Running them down, much plenty of service loop in these guys. And then a lot of this was sorted out. So this is now a nicely, neat, well-organized room. Here's our temperature sensor for our uh, environmentals with the UPS. Some other uh, cable management here for our cable modem. But any, anywhere that it was possible to secure things so that things can't get unplugged accidentally, uh, we, we've done it. So I'm pretty proud of uh, the end result. We got rid of that rack that was here, but um, yeah, I'm pleased. And that doesn't happen often. <laughs>